Let's see here, we got a little path down this way. Oh, look at mushrooms. What are those? I do not know what those are. I'll have to get my, brought my mushroom book with me. Um, oh wait a second, okay. Wait, which way do I go? Let's try this way. Oh my goodness, look more. What are these? Wow. They are everywhere. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, check it out. Look, more mushrooms. A waterfall. A crystal clear creek. Wow. <laughs> what is going on, guys? Oh. I am in the Appalachian Mountains, and I've just discovered a brand new creek here. So I was out driving the other day. By the way, quick tip. A lot of people ask me, how do you find all these cool spots? I spend hours driving around. I find creeks on a map, on literally a paper map, and I'm like, let's try it. And so I'll go and I'll drive to Creek X, and I'll start hiking along it, and a lot of times it's a bust, but a lot of times I score. And I certainly scored here, at least I think I did, but I'm in the mountains and I'm excited that there might be some wild mountain trout up here. Um, let's see here, I'm trying to, what I'd like to do is fish the waterfall. I've learned in my time here in the Appalachian Mountains that when you're going for trout, if you can fish, yep, here we go. If you can fish in the waterfall, those are the best spots. Oh man, this is this is cool. I have to be careful not to slip on any of these rocks here. But check this out. This creek goes for miles, um, at least on the map. And uh, I don't see any reason at all why it wouldn't be loaded with wild mountain trout. But I guess I'll have to see. All right, let's get my backpack out here. I'm going to show you guys something. I brought a bunch of stuff with me because I wasn't sure what to expect. So it was like, well, might as well pack everything. So I've got something here. I uh, brought this fly box full of little flies there. Don't know if we'll get to all this stuff today, but I've got uh, certainly some flies in there. This is actually, I think my dad had a friend just like give this to him and we're not fly fishermen in our family. Uh, so we've never really used any of these, but I thought I'm gonna bring this this time. Then I have a whole bunch of little Dry Creek trout tubes. Just little micro, extra soft, one and a half inch tubes here and all these different colors, some yellow ones there. So might try some of those. And then I have here some salmon eggs. And then of course, I also have some night crawlers. And we'll probably, and I know I'll start off with night crawlers here. The thing I'm most excited about are these little tubes, but I'm gonna put those away just for the moment. And we're gonna use night crawlers just to like get an idea, I guess, of what's in here or if there's anything in here, because it's not good to come to a brand new spot and be using brand new, like, experimental baits. So, let's drop a worm down first. First cast of the day, by the way. I got one, I got one, guys. Oh my gosh, oh shoot, it was a rainbow. Son of a gun. That was like second cast. Oh, flipped it behind that rock. Haven't done that yet. Let's see if there's anything back there. Got one, got one, behind the rock. Behind the rock. What do we got? A little rainbow. Woohoo! First fish of the trip. Not a big one, but we don't expect to catch a ton of big ones here, guys. This is probably gonna be pretty much the average size. Now the question is, do I keep one this small? And I'm going, no. This is probably about a five incher. Beautiful little fish, but let's wait for something just a little bit bigger. That's what's always, whoa, hold up. Got a crawfish right here. Is he alive? Yeah, he's alive. Barely. 
Something must be wrong with him. Huh. All right, we'll set the trout there. I caught, just caught my first crawdad out of the day. It's like something is, he's barely moving. Huh, interesting. You know what I might do, folks? I think I'm gonna use this guy for bait. Yeah, I'm gonna take the meat out of the shell. Sweet, first crawfish of the day. All right, let's get this trout off the hook now. That was cool. It's funny how like everything's relative. Like if you're fishing a big trout lake, there's no way you'd keep one that small. But now that I'm fishing a tiny creek, you know what? I changed my mind. I hooked him in the eye. Let's keep this one. Let's keep him. Anyway, when you're fishing at a big trout lake, of course you never keep one that big, but when you're micro stream fishing, this is uh, pretty normal to keep one this size. All right, folks, and just like that, a little trout and a little crawfish in the bag. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, crawfish, some of the best bait out there. It's like this one, this one is sick or something, so I'm gonna kill him real quick. Then we're just gonna twist the tail off, all right? Just like so. Take the back fin off, and it leaves us with that little tiny chunk. There we go, and it's not much at all, but it's the smell of it that the trout loves so much. It's a little tiny piece of meat, and this gives off a terrific smell. In fact, what you can even do is when you get a big crawdad, you can take the um, meat out of the claws, but this guy's not gonna have enough claw meat for the effort, I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave that. Let's see if I can get any on that little chunk of crawfish. Crawfish going down. Got him, got him, on the crawdad. On the crawfish. Yes! Another rainbow trout, <laughs> sweet! Excellent, excellent. And this is definitely a keeper size, about a seven incher. Beautiful rainbow trout there, gobbled up that little teeny tiny piece of crawfish. They, it's just irresistible to them. All right, where's the bag? All right. <laughs> there we go, my friends. Two trout. And I haven't even explored all the rest of this creek. I'm just gonna work my way up. All right, folks, now it is time to begin a little bit of experimentation. One of the reasons why I wanted to come out here was to try all of these different tubes here. I wanted to try some different colors of these micro tubes. You see I have six different colors here. I already know this one works for trout because I've caught, this is called Happy Meal. I've caught trout on this one before, actually in old videos like three years ago. This one, I haven't caught anything on it. And then this is the natural series, it's called. More natural colored, these four here. This is changeable craw, which of course, I love this color for bass fishing. I've never really used these micro tubes for trout. So I'm gonna experiment around with some of these because we gotta decide which one of these is gonna go in the Ace Videos trout tube box that we're working on. This color and this color definitely are going in it. And um, we're just gonna see which ones make it, make the cut kind of a thing. So. I'm gonna try this color here first. It's called Hare's Ear. Hair, like a like a rabbit. Hare's Ear, let's try it. All right, micro tube in a color I've never used before. I'm going out. Are you kidding me? I had one, guys. I had one already. Second cast with it. All right, my friends. Got a couple of trout here. Let's move on, but before we move on, let's see here. Now up here looks pretty good, okay? I was gonna go check the mushrooms. You know, let's check the mushrooms first, and then I'll resume fishing. Check these out, let's see here. Um, they look kinda like a dirty mushroom. <laughs> yeah, I don't, huh. They just look dirty. All right, got a, a good mushroom, bad mushroom book here. It's not comprehensive, but it uh, it has a lot of them, the common ones. Yep, guys, I don't I don't see this guy actually one way or the other if it's good or bad. Um, yeah, they look cool, but 
I'm only eating what I absolutely know and can identify. <laughs> So I know I have a lot of campers who watch my channel, and I want you guys to do something for me. I want you to go into your garage, grab your old, loud gasoline generator, sell it on Craigslist, then take that money and buy yourself a silent, yes, silent, jackery generator. Folks, gone are the days of hand cranking a gasoline generator, and then having that annoying sound ruin your trip into nature. Not to mention ruin the ambiance for all the campers around you. This is as much noise as the Jackery generator makes. Listen closely. We turn it on. And you're ready to go. That's it. Now you just plug in whatever you want. You can plug in a phone charger. You can plug in a computer. You can plug in your portable AC. And I know a lot of you who camp down south camp with a portable AC. Imagine being able to sleep all night long without that loud generator going on in the background. One charge of this generator gets you several days of battery life, depending on how you use it. But what if you're one of those people who says, I go for camping for a week or two at a time? No problem. All you have to do is plug in the solar panels and you have unlimited power to your generator straight from the sun. I use mine every time I camp and let me tell you folks, I ain't going back. Check them out, linked up in the description below. And at the time of this video, they have their ninth anniversary sale going. A ton of fantastic deals on all sizes of their generators. Make sure you guys check them out before the sale ends. Well, my friends, that first spot was pretty sweet. And I'm just gonna pick my way up this river here and just look for more deep holes to fish for good looking little runs. And I'm also keeping an eye out for uh, some crawdad spots. Look at that huge rock. I mean, it's like a nine foot tall, just giant piece of granite, I guess. I don't know, broke off. Yeah, okay, there, there's, all right, there's a log right here. Check it out, guys. Yeah, yeah, that little, that little corner right there. That should be good. Yeah, I'm gonna work my way around here. And I'm gonna throw it in from this angle. And that way I'm kind of hidden from view. <gasps> got him, got him. In that, oh shoot, shoot, shoot. There he is, there he is. Wait, he's right in here. We got him, almost. He's under a rock. <laughs> he's under this rock. Hiding. You know, all right, I'm gonna do something real quick. I'm gonna kind of dam it up here. Where's my bag? All right, gotta run over here. I gotta grab the red bag. Use it as kind of a net. So I'm gonna put the, the red bag right here. I'm gonna dam it up on this side. And then I'm gonna try to chase him out of there. Hopefully he'll swim right in. I gotta lift this rock up. Oh, he did swim in. I was like, wait, what? All right, so I caught him in the bag. He, he was so fast, I didn't even see it. I think he probably swam in with all these leaves and stuff. That's why I didn't see him. There he is. Check it out, guys little rainbow trout that is so beautiful it's interesting how the the mountain ones are darker than rainbow trout you catch like in a lake so interesting it's like they're suntanned all right I'm gonna let this guy go caught him on that little hair's ear tube that is super cool three bites on that so far Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, as I was just walking, check out this huge crawfish. All right, they're fast around here. Got him. Yes, a big one, guys. For these small creeks, that is a monster crawfish right there. Fantastic, sweet. It wasn't even under a rock. 
I left some of the uh, leaves and stuff in there so that I hoped it would, it would kind of calm the crawdads down. So, all right, two trout and a big eating crawfish. Just kind of foraging these streams. Guys, I see the tips of the claws of a crawfish sticking out here. Guys, I see a trout right there. That might have been a brook trout. Kind of spooked him. I don't think he's going to bite this. But I did see a trout. Got him! Got him! Yes! On the tube! I saw him swimming around. It's a rainbow. Thought it was a brookie. Oh, caught in the tree there. Oh, that is cool. That is so... I, I sight fished for him. I didn't realize he had, all of a sudden I saw him like doing a, a little figure eight. And I thought, wait, he must have the bait in his mouth if he's doing a figure eight like that. On that tube, folks, the hare's ear is getting it done. I think we'll add that to the Ace Videos trout box. Ah, uh, this is so cool. <laughs> there he goes. All right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch colors and see about some of these other tubes here. Look at that. It's called Mocha Stone. Let's give it a go. Got him. He came up to the surface, guys. I took the split shot off, and this trout came up to the surface and grabbed the tube. The tube floats when there's no weight on it. And I was like, I wonder if, like, almost like a dry fly. Oh, that is a beautiful trout. Wow. Look at the pink colors on that one. That, that like, looks a little bit different. Wow. That is so cool. 100% wild trout in these creeks, folks. All right. I actually want to keep one more, but this trout is so beautiful, I'm going to let him go. Folks, that was super unique because that was the first time I've ever used a soft plastic as like a dry fly. The tube floats on the surface if I don't add a split shot, and I thought, you know, I think trout would still go for this. So I took the split shot off and just kind of twitched it on the surface, and the, and the, the trout got it like that. All right. So I'm kind of behind, hiding behind the big rock. Let's flip it in there. Got him. Got him. Same thing again, folks. The dry tube. Another rainbow. <laughs> what a fun, fun deal. About the same size. You know what? Should I keep this one? Yeah. Yep, let's have three. What a day. Folks, I've, actually, I've only actually been out here a couple of hours. And all of this stuff here, what a beautiful trout. This is that perfect medium size um, where, you see that little tube right there? Where I'm not harvesting like a, a big one out of here, a 12, 13 incher, which would be big for this little creek. It's right in the middle, about seven inches or so. So I'm gonna keep this one. All right. Fish this spot out good. Scored a nice trout. On to the next one. Check out this pool here. I actually just scared a fish all the way in the corner there. So this is how I'm gonna crawfish hunt. I'm gonna take the trout out and I'm gonna actually fillet the trout real quick. Not fillet them, I'm just gonna gut them. They're too tiny to fillet. I'm gonna take them out here. I'm gonna throw the guts around in the water and that should draw the crawdads out and then I can just kind of pick them up. I do not want to waste a bite of the delicate and delicious meat on these. So I'm just gonna take the guts out and the gills all in one fell swoop. There we go. Look at this pool here. This looks good too. Um, let's see here. I'm just gonna throw it. It doesn't almost, oh, I see a trout swimming around. Almost doesn't matter where you throw it, as long as it's in the vicinity. Oh, you see him, there's the trout goes. It's like the crawdads just come out from wherever they're at because they smell it and they start searching around. 
All right, so all three trout are cleaned. And this was something crazy, folks. Look at this trout's eye. The crawdad must have eaten it out while he was in the bag. Crawdads love to eat out the eyes of fish and the gills. So, yeah, kind of gruesome there, but sweet. A nice little catch of the day. This beautiful creek. It's crazy to me how dark it's getting out here. Well, it's only like five o'clock, but in the shadow of the mountain, it's feeling really dark, but you can see sunshine at the top of the trees. And it's like getting really chilly out right now. That's cool. Let's cook. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do, folks? It's like a table. I was walking by and I was like, this seems like a big table. I'm going to cook on this. I was looking for a log or like somewhere cool to sit, but it's like flat or flattish right here. And uh, I can even fish one more spot in the creek if I want to. But this is where I'm cooking. Sweet. New bottle, the new bottle missed. Get a little clear creek water. Got here some salt. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, forgot that it had that. Okay, well, um, we got some salty water there. Well, I'm just gonna actually cook the crawdads for just a minute or two and then throw them in with the stir fry. I've got some pre-chopped vegetables and I plan on cooking the vegetables, the trout, and the crawdad all together. <laughs> oh, that water's boiling nicely. Look at these two. They are monstrous. Look, they think they're gonna climb out. Alrighty. Oh, no, he's like, that ain't, that ain't it. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, seriously, this is, it's been a while. These are the biggest crawdads I've ever caught in the Appalachian Mountains. And you know what? These seem like Idaho crawdads, like the species. These seem like in my home, home state of Idaho, that seems like the same species. There we go. I did not catch a small crawfish today. All right, three, <laughs> absolutely wild rainbow trout from the mountains and our crawfish here looking good that should be enough just to just four or five minutes on them they'll finish cooking I'm gonna add a little sesame oil in with the butter 
and then the vegetables. Put a little soy sauce in there. Just kind of slip the trout right in. Just cooking it on a low heat. And I'm going to add a little garlic and herb seasoning. I'm hungry. Okay. First off, I have to say that these are some of the most mongo crawfish I've ever caught. And I'm interested to see how they taste. It's just a thick, fat crawfish. All right. It peels very easily. The shell is soft, which is different. If you guys hit follow my channel closely, I've been catching some of these Appalachian crawfish and some of them, the shell is super hard and it's no fun to try to eat them. We have to say the crawdads aren't very full. It's kind of a small piece of meat for it, but you see how it tastes. That's a really good crawdad. The meat is different. It's super soft. Right, so, so watch this. So the shell breaks really easily. And there we go. Grab the bad stuff out there. It's the most tender crawdad I've ever eaten. It's delicious. Let's give these wild trout a taste. Okay. That's an amazing trout. I eat a lot of stock trout, and there is a huge, huge difference. This has been such a cool day. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Go out there and find your own adventures. I mean, watch this video. I hope it inspires you. Find creeks and rivers around your place. I do it all the time. You just gotta get out there and try it, so, wow. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I hope you guys enjoyed today's adventures. I'll see you in the next one.